want to try and squeeze these in because they did drop in a couple of times during the presentation. Harvey, perhaps you want to have the first go at this one as it first dropped in during your segment. And it's just asking, is it wise to have perhaps a, a good due diligence checklist? And if so, how often should this be refreshed? Or is it a case of you know, there's no real one size fits all type of checklist that you could have? So a multifaceted question there revolving around a good due diligence checklist. Perhaps you want to have the first, uh, first go of that, Harvey. Yeah, I appreciate that question a lot. The good news is there are a lot of sources to get due diligence checklists. If your firm does not already have one, uh, you can get them through practical law or a service like that. Also, just Googling due diligence checklists, you can find it, often tailored to specific industries. I think you look at several and then you spend a little time tailoring it to your particular transaction, what's important to you in that transaction, some of the particulars of the business, and then it can evolve as the transaction continues on. Thank you so much. And Joshua, this question dropped in a couple of times during your segment. And I know you touched upon the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, on these uh, on these topics. But are there any other specifics that you wanted to mention about perhaps how COVID-19 has affected what what's being discussed today? And are there any cha are there any changes that have been implemented that are perhaps here to stay even in a post-COVID world? So I think that COVID affects uh, business primarily, and then you got to understand and talk to your business folks and your clients about what that means for you as a lawyer, what the legal responsibilities are, what the legal import is. You know, um, you know, one of the things I spoke about was the informal waivers. Um, I, I think a lot of that's been happening, and the real question is, well. So, so what to the lawyers, right? Do, do they need to formalize that? Is it like a one-time thing? Um, so I, I think that it's really a key to uh, having a conversation with the business folks to understand the impact of the COVID. And then, you know, your job as a lawyer is to sort of translate, well, how do I pay for that? How do I ensure that, you know, my client's protected against these, you know, changes in business that happen because of COVID? Thank 